Good morning, and here we are with Rise and Shine with Doris Wilkinson this morning. Good morning, Doris. Good morning. How are you today? I'm well, thank you. Good. Uh, oh, well, thank you for asking. Actually, the arthritis in my hand has been giving me a fit lately. Throbbing and aching. But then that's just what goes right along with all the other aches and pains I have. <laughs> and do you know what the doctor told me the last time I was there? No. She said, I'm getting old. Oh, no. Well, of course I'm getting old or I wouldn't be here. <laughs> and I told her, I hope she wasn't going to charge me for that diagnosis. <laughs> My arthritis gets worse when it gets cold. And talking about cold weather, what do you think of this weather? I surely don't like it. 20 degrees one day, 70 degrees the next day. My winter clothes don't know if they're coming or going. <laughs> and this morning I almost got blown away when I took Buster out for his walk. The next thing you know, it'll be snowing. Well, I'm not fond of that either. The roads get all slippery and treacherous, and I don't like to drive on them when they're that way. I have to be extra careful walking, because you know, at my age, I could fall and break something. <laughs> I only go out when I have to, and that's usually to the grocery store. Has anybody been to the grocery store lately? Well, there's hardly any use of going. They don't have half the items. And then there's a limit on how many I can buy. Things just aren't like they used to be. We didn't have all these problems to deal with before. Did any of that sound like an attitude of gratitude? If I continued to talk like that, I could be an Israelite. <laughs> grumbling and complaining and complaining and grumbling and whining. We need water to drink. We're going to die of thirst. We need something to eat. We're going to starve to death. We're tired of manna. We want meat. We should just go back to Egypt. This is why it took 40 years for them to do an 11 day journey. <laughs> kind of reminds me of the theme song from Gilligan's Island. They set off on a three hour tour and I don't know how long they got stuck on that island. But anyway, the Israelites were always complaining and grumbling, grumbling and complaining. First Corinthians 10, nine to 11 gives us a warning about the consequences of complaining. God eventually got fed up with all that complaining, and so he caused 23,000, 23,000 Israelites to die in one day. Do we sound like wandering Israelites sometimes? Always complaining, not getting anywhere? Are we complaining about everything? and not giving the Lord thanks for anything we do have? Well, I can probably say been there, done that. Ron asked me a few weeks ago to talk about what I'm thankful for. And then on Sunday, Ken asked if we could write down 10 things we were thankful for. Well, I can't imagine only being thankful for 10 things, but whatever. You know, it's okay to be thankful for all that we have. It's a pitiful person who can't be thankful for something. Mm -hmm. But I think it's more important to give thanks. After all, today is thanksgiving, mm -hmm. not thanksgiving, thanksgiving, a day especially to give thanks. Of course, in all reality, every day should be a day of giving thanks, not just today. We shouldn't wait till Thanksgiving to give our thanks. As I 
said there's a difference between being thankful and giving thanks. We are told 76 times in the Bible to give thanks. Giving thanks is done purposefully, intentionally, and deliberately. Psalm 34, 1 to 3 tells us to praise the Lord. In other words, give him thanks at all times. Now, I know you've heard that before. And who should do this? Well, the helpless, the humble, the afflicted. Mm -hmm. All of us are to glorify the Lord, give him thanks, no matter what our situation is. When we complain about our lives and our situations, we're really blocking our blessings. Complaining drags us down, makes us weak. It makes us look like we don't appreciate mm -hmm. what God has done for us and what he's given us. Mm -hmm. Gratitude and thankfulness give us power. 1 Thessalonians 5. 12 to 18, reminds us to be thankful in all circumstances. In everything, give thanks. However, there's an added dimension there. Not only are we to give thanks to God, but we are to give thanks to others. Were you taught as a child to say thank you when someone gave you something? Did you cultivate that habit? and still have it today? Do we sometimes forget to say thank you? Mm, yes. As I thought about Ron's question to me, I assumed I could eliminate the obvious things I give thanks for, like Jesus, each new day of life, family, friends. So I went to the lesser thought about things I give thanks for, and I made this acrostic chart. <laughs> Step on. <laughs> oh, sorry, I got the camera. <laughs> start with T for teeth and toes, teachers, technology, thumbs, turkeys, toothpaste, transportation and travel, and toilet paper. <laughs> H for hair, health, hearing, head and hands, a husband, home, Hugs, happiness, help, hot showers, holidays, and hope. A, angels, art, arms, abilities, air, automatic anything, dishwashers, clothes washers, dryers, refrigerators, <laughs> microwaves, in. Nature, nurses, new days, nights, nails, naps, napkins even say give thanks. <laughs> Neckties, neighbors, noses, nuts. K, kindness of others, knives, kittens, ketchup, keys. Kids, kidneys, king size candy bars, kisses, kitchens, knees, and knowledge. F, furry friends, food on our table, flowers, fresh starts, feet, farms, freedoms, faith, and forgiveness. You, Umbrellas, uncles, underwear, especially clean underwear, <laughs> uniforms, 
upside down cake. Utilities, utensils, ushers, and most of all, the ultimate sacrifice. L, life and love, laughter, learning from mistakes, leaves, legs, lakes, land, lawns, leftovers, lemons, letters, and light. And even the lesser than less thought about things like money in the bank, a roof over my head, a floor under my feet, food in my stomach, weekends, schools, churches, a comfy bed, cars, sunshine, time, frozen peas, batteries, fireworks, voices, water, books, rainbows, indoor plumbing with toilets that flush, <laughs> mountains, eyesight, grocery stores, sunsets, the moon, the stars, electricity, oceans, medicine, music, and warm clothing, ink pins that work, scented diaper disposal bags, mm -hmm. Target's $1 clearance section, size 14 shoes, band-aids, pajamas with feet, mouse traps, bubbles, Beano, matching socks, which dates me, <laughs> or unmatched socks depending on what generation you're in, McGriddles, mocha frappuccino from Starbucks, the five second rule, <laughs> biofreeze, airbags, duct tape, banana splits, bacon, deodorant, forever stamps, elevators, zippers, pizza, bifocals, and salt and vinegar potato chips. And on and on and on and on the list could go, but the point is, don't wait just for Thanksgiving Day to give thanks. Do it every day. Give thanks for the small things, as well as the big things. In fact, why not start off the new year giving thanks? Each day, select one thing you are thankful for and reflect on that all day long, giving thanks to God for it. Thank you for listening to my rambling. I'm thankful for all of you and thankful for my mountaintop family. Doris, thank you so much for being a part of Rise and Shine this morning, okay? Glad that, to do it. That was really special. Thank you. That was really yeah. special. Thank you. When I heard this uh, at church tonight, I thought, we got to tape that and uh, send that out for Thanksgiving because I was really, uh, you know, there's lots of messages I could have preached tomorrow morning on Thanksgiving, but I just love this. I really do. <laughs>